Hey guys, what is up? I hope everybody has been having a great day. Happy to be back with the 60,000 subscriber special featuring 18 holes at Bully Rock Golf Club. If you guys could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you guys want to see more daily golf and long drive content, please follow my Instagram at Kyle Berkshire as I am very active on there. I want to thank everyone for subscribing to this channel and getting us to 60,000 subscribers. That's another huge milestone and I'm very appreciative and grateful for all your support. Now that the merchandise store is pretty much ready for its launch in the next few days, I'll be putting out a lot more content on this channel as I know the last few weeks it's been tough for me given all the stuff I've been doing with merchandise and, and whatnot. So get ready for probably three to five uploads a week from now on. So definitely subscribe if you guys are wanting more because I'm going to definitely be upping the frequency of my uploads from now on. So I'm very excited about that and I hope you guys are too. So that being said, let's hop into it. So I actually have a history at this golf course. This used to be where the high school state championship was contested, the final round. And so my freshman year, which was, well, actually, it, so the best way to describe it is they, we would play different courses throughout Maryland. It would be three rounds of competition, and each round would be at a different course, and it would be on three successive Mondays because we were in school, so we couldn't just take three days off in a row to go play in a golf tournament. So the first round would be at one course, the second round would be at another course, and the third round, which would be the final round, would be you know typically at a course that was a really big deal in Maryland. And so my freshman year this was the course we played our final round at and I was in contention. I believe I, I think I was six or sixth place or something like that. And I shot a 73, which is one over as a freshman. So it's been about eight years now. And my goal is to break that. This is the break 73. That would really be nice if I could think that I was a better player now than I was as a freshman. I will say that it was one of the best rounds I'd played up to that point in my career. And I ended up getting clipped by Chris Navarro, who's a good buddy of mine. And he it was a tremendous feat what he did winning it as a freshman. I think I think only, only one other person has actually won the high school state championship in Maryland as a freshman. So that was big kudos to him. And I'll probably have him on the channel at some point for like a match or something. So we'll have to see about that. He's definitely he's down in Florida right now, I think. But yeah, there's been definitely an interesting start to the round. Um, didn't hit a very good tee shot there and got myself in trouble. And now I've been scrambling. And I thought this one would release a little bit better. But one of the things you guys will see is how thick this rough was. Bully Rock is probably one of the top few hardest golf courses in the in the state. Definitely one of the most famous. And it was, it was, it was a ton of fun to play because I, I have some knowledge of the course. So it was nice to kind of go back to familiar territory and get to play this course. And that's probably one of the worst putts you've ever seen me hit. And that's saying something. And so these greens had just been aerified. And they actually did a great job of getting the greens back into pretty good shape. Even with having just aerified them a few days before. But they were a little slower, so I was trying to get used to that. So not a very good six by any stretch of the imagination on hole two there so trying to recover from that and just hit a nice little knockdown with my nine iron here kind of squeeze this one out to the right and something uh i don't know if you guys noticed but i'm trying to keep my back foot down a little more because one of the issues i keep dealing with is that basically my back foot turns too early and what ends up happening is my lower body just turns too fast and it causes my hips to get ahead of my upper body and then everything else just trails and makes it very hard to square up the club face properly. So what I need to be doing is starting the starting my downswing a little quicker so that the hips are in sync with the upper body and that will allow a lot more consistent ball striking and a lot more hopefully a lot more consistent spread of shots. Cuz the biggest problem I've been dealing with right now is my misses have been just not very good and you know they're not really as tight as they should be and that's probably the biggest difference between me right now and you know like a pro golfer is my and you can see me rehearsing that there I'm really trying to kind of nail that down and figure that out 
And so once those as those misses get better and better, I think the scores are going to improve a lot. And that's kind of, you know, I've been working my butt off on it and just kind of staying patient and kind of going from going going off of that and just looking for the progress to come, you know, steadily, slowly. And the hardest thing in the world is to be patient, you know, because you want to see improvement right away. And that's just not how this game works, at least not at the highest level. That's why I think it's so hard to trust what you're working on and to know that it's eventually going to result in a better shot. Because I think a lot of people, when they try to make changes, they're, they're trying to make changes most often to a better technique. However, their previous technique, even though it wasn't as good, is more ingrained. So they're, so they're more comfortable with um, their previous technique, which produces better shots, even if the technique isn't as good. And so the new technique, which has the capability to produce even better shots, because it's not ingrained the way it should be, the results aren't where a lot of people would like them to be. And it just takes tons of patience. It's just like weight loss or anything that is hard. It takes time and consistency and patience. And so that's what I've been kind of going with as I continue to improve my game. And so not a good start here at all. But I will say, I play some amazing golf towards the end of this round. And I hit some incredible shots. So I'm, I'm just stay tuned for that because I know you guys will enjoy that. And sound up for this driver. And this is probably the hardest hole at the course, in my opinion at least. And... There's a little alley just around those trees where the fairway bends left. That If you can fit it up that little alley, it's absolutely perfect. And it's exactly what I did. And you can see, not getting a lot of roll. And this hole probably produces the biggest divots you'll ever see. Like, because it's really wet and it's uphill. And so that's a recipe for massive divots. So it's really important to catch ball first. And <laughs> you can see the size of that divot. Um, I pulled this one just a bit left, which was definitely not a very good shot. Didn't do a good job of capitalizing on a really great tee shot. And you can see just off the green. Another couple yards right, and that would have been really, really good. And But you can look, I mean, that rough is just tough. I mean, and when you have a shot that short in the rough, my best advice is to use a lot of hinge. So what I mean by that is you don't want to move your hands too much on a shot like that. You want to get as much of a wrist angle as possible because you want the club coming in steep to get to the ball. That's what it's all about because if you have really thick rough, the more grass that gets in between the ball and the club, the less control you're going to have. So just a little tidbit. Now in hole six, and guys, this was probably one of the most insane drives I'd ever hit. So there's a creek at about 350, and so I wanted to carry it over that onto the fairway. And I belted this one, and absolutely perfect ball flight. And I was like, "Carry, come on, go!" And you'll see in a little bit here. I actually got it over that creek. I'll show you. If so, if you look at the zoom in here, the left edge of that fairway on the other side, you can see a ball. So that's where I got I got it up to. And you can see now at the ball, looking back at the tee, that's where it ended up. So that was pretty cool. And also, if you guys didn't already notice, you can tell it's getting a bit darker. So I actually had to skip around the course a little bit because my first four or five holes, I was behind a really a few really slow groups, and the marshal was really great and he helped me out. And there was an opening on like hole ten or eleven with several holes open. So I finished hole four, went to hole ten, and since I had a pretty good opening, I was able to play at a pretty good speed without running, any, in, running into anyone all the way through hole 18. And then after 18, I was able to circle back to hole 5, and like I just did, and play the rest of this out. So 10 was actually my last hole of the day. So if you, you guys will notice it's getting a little darker, but don't worry. Like after 10, it'll be back to normal daylight. It, I just It was tough to get this round in because we just got hit with a hurricane. And so it was things were closed for a few days, and I planned to do, on doing this – uh, special a few days earlier but obviously with the course being closed I couldn't do it and then when they opened up everyone was wanting to play because golf had basically been closed for a few days so it was but it was tough to get it get the round in but we got it done that's all that matters so I thought I was going to be on the green here but one of the things about 
my new my swing change is, is I'm also shortening my swing a little bit to help keep the club in front of me. And so with that, it's going to be a new equilibrium I'm going to be trying to reach with my distance control. So it's going to be a process. I'm hitting a lot of good shots. And when I get dialed in, and you guys will see that I get pretty dialed in in, in, a, in, a, in the next few holes here. And so that's kind of, when I get dialed in, things are really great. Things are in, they're, you know, I'm playing great. And it's just when I'm missing, the misses are still pretty substantial, as I alluded to earlier. So it's just a process, as Tiger always said, and you have to be patient. And those who have the patience are the ones who get the results in the end. So that's kind of what I've been telling myself. So not the best drive here. Kind of left myself out on the right with some trees to contend with. Did get a decent lie, fortunately. And so... At about 2.30 and just kind of choked down and hit a bit of a runner. And it was just a bit right of the green. And it got knocked down by the rough. So just got, you know, a little bit of a tough, fluffy flop shot here. And again, this rough was tough. I mean, I, I actually hadn't really played a course in a while that had legitimately tough rough. And it, it just goes to show how much it can affect the course around. I think a lot of people on TV it's hard to appreciate what really tough rough looks like. And we just saw Colin Morikawa win at uh, TBC Harden Park, the PGA Championship. And that rough was probably twice as long as the rough here. And it's pretty incredible to think about playing well on a course with rough twice as long as this. Because what you got to realize is when you have rough that long, it's really easy to hit it into rough because it's, it's everywhere. And if it's basically a half-shot penalty, I mean, that's like having almost a water hazard if you miss the fairway. And that can really make things challenging. So a lot of respect to those guys for gutting it out last week. And it's fun to watch. You know, it's fun to watch those guys play the way they're playing. So now 137 yards left and just trying to flight a 46-degree wedge. And, again, this is a perfect example of my timing being off because I'm making changes. My, my distance was perfect, but I pulled it, and, you know, that's just resolved the club getting there too soon. But it's a good thing because that means that my I'm overcorrecting, which means that I have at some point figured out the feel, but I'm doing it too much on certain shots now. So it's about finding that equilibrium. And I apologize for the camera here. I, I corrected this after this shot. I think some just some water got on the lens. And this was my best shot of the day by a mile. And I love how it was the one shot that was clouded up by water. And so this is a very severe dog leg left. And it was actually my last hole of the day, technically. And I was driving up, and you can see the pitch mark there. And it landed right next to the hole. And that's the tee box, like, behind the trees right there. And so I knew this was in the direction of the hole. And I knew it was probably pretty close to pin high. It's some, you know, just knowing how far it is when you cut the corner. And I drove up, and it was tight. It was like six feet. So that's a heck of an eagle right there. And that definitely kickstarts the round, even though it was my last hole of the day, I guess. But So now in hole 11, this is the hole I skipped to after um, I had to skip around. But pull this one a bit left. But that is left is the miss here because you got another hole running up back the other way. So you got pretty much endless room to miss left. So kind of set myself up to miss that way if I, if I did, in fact, hit a bad shot. Now I have a pretty good lie here and just trying to chase a 5-iron up there. And this thing took off. This took probably one of the most incredible bounces ever. It was going a little bit right. And I don't know what it bounce it took, but look just right at this pin when you zoom in. You can see my ball about 15 feet away. So my guess is that it kicked off of a little knoll, like right there right in front of the green that's my guess but i don't know it took an incredible bounce and yeah i left myself 15 feet for two straight eagles which is definitely nice the game's pretty easy when you are putting for eagles all the time so i would love that to be where my game is in a few weeks and not a very good putt but hey i got three shots back in the last two holes so that's always good so now on hole 12 back to level par and keep in mind I'm trying to break 73 73 is the number I want to beat and I caught a great day it bully rock is typically very windy and that's probably 
one of besides its thick rough and being seven thousand four hundred plus yards long, the wind is typically what really really makes this this course tough. And when I shot seventy three, it was blowing. Um, it, it was brutal, and it was pretty benign today. Like it, it was maybe five to ten mile an hour winds with fifteen mile an hour gusts. But yeah, there you go. There's the rough. Not very forgiving. <laughs> and um, but. So I caught a pretty, pretty calm day, so I'm trying to take advantage of it. And here again, as I said earlier, your best option when you have rough like that in such a short carry distance is hinge your wrists and just stab at it. Try to get as steep as you possibly can because if you go in shallow with the club, it's going to just start getting in contact with the rough and the ball is going to go nowhere. And so and, and, and the reality is when you're around the green like that and that kind of rough you're just not going to be able to hit it close every time because you can't predict how it's going to come out and so yeah drop the shot there back to one over on hole 13 Had a pretty good drive here I was trying to I didn't want to turn it over as much as I did but I was trying to cut off some of that corner because this hole snakes to the right a lot and it does have a hazard that comes in on the right so this was the place to miss and so only 145 yards left on my second shot, but I had a really, really tough lie. You can see the ball, but basically I hit the shot and there was an acorn between my wedge and the ball that I didn't see. And that's on me. I should have, you can see me wiping it out because I realized the second I hit it that the contact was garbage. And you can see how short I am. Because that literally, like, that acorn literally was in between my ball and the club. And that's just me not being diligent. And I think those are other things that definitely take a while to come back. Those kind of small things when you don't compete for a while. So, pretty good chip and knocked that one in for par. So, that was a great par save to stay one over. It's now in hole 14. Probably one of the easier holes in the course because it's a very wide fairway. And you just you're just hitting a little nice little five iron. Putting myself in a position. And I pulled it. So... It wasn't a big pull, but it was enough to put me into the left rough, which was very, very not smart. It definitely made the approach shot much harder than it needed to be. But I did draw a decent lie. However, obviously I'm going to have trouble spinning it, and the pin was on the front edge of the green. So I took a 60-degree wedge and tried to get some loft on it. And so I got it in here pretty good and uh, just did clear that bunker. It was a bit short. But it ran out a few feet, so got myself onto the front edge of the green there. And I have a pretty makeable birdie putt here. Looks like about 20, 25 feet maybe. So just trying to get a few more birdies coming in. Made a great stroke here, and I thought it would snake back to the right and just kind of stayed out. So another par, and on hole 15 now, par 5, 529 yards. Again, you know, there's a fairway on the left that you can try to get to, but it's a tough carry. It's really, really tight. So I just stick, stuck with the second fairway, but pulled it a bit left and put it into the fairway bunker, which is definitely a tough spot to be. And so now I have 237 yards left. So, and I have a four iron. And so my tip at the fairway bunker shots, as I consider it probably one of the strongest parts of my game, and I kind of taught myself this, Put the ball back in your stance, lean back on your back foot, and then make a swing. Because what that's going to do, it's going to shallow out the bottom of your swing, and it's also going to cause you to swing up on it, which is going to be very great for hitting the ball first, which is critical in a fairway bunker shot. And I hit a tremendous shot here. Like You can see where the ball landed, and it ran just through the green. And I put myself in a great spot here to get up and down for birdie. Definitely wish I would have checked up a little more. That would have been something if I hit it to like 10 feet. But a really terrible chip here. Again, you know, when the rough is this thick, it's just so hard to predict how the ball is going to come off the face. And sometimes it comes off hot because you catch more of the ball than you expect. Sometimes it comes out fluffy because you catch less of the ball than you expect. And, and that's just part of dealing with the rough, especially when it's this long. But made a fantastic stroke here and knocked it in. So that was that was pretty nice. And now going into the next hole here. And I was salivating at this point because I was feeling good. So sound up here. So you guys might notice I took a little bit off of this because I actually would have been a little too much if I went full at it. Because this was incredibly downhill. And I didn't want to go along at the screen. And so you can see that's the tee box back there. 
and yep somehow got backspin it was actually a pretty downhill slope on the fringe so i don't know how i spun it back there but that was a great shot and gets me in line for probably my third eagle putt on the back nine and we're not even done with it so that's pretty cool I was a little aggressive with this. I thought this had a chance, and I kind of forgot to remember that I shouldn't give myself an eight-footer on comebacker. So have about a little more than I wanted coming back. Looks like about six or seven feet. Made a pretty good stroke and brushed it in, so no harm, no foul. So now a hole 17 and one under, which was awesome. And so I'm kind of really trying to really finish strong here. I'm feeling good, and I've been playing great golf the last few holes. And the, the screen slides away from me a bit. And I, I was, once again, I was a little bit weak on my follow-through and squeezed it out just a bit to the right. And you can see I'm really annoyed, and I'll show you why. So you can see it, that's the T, T right there, and the green really falls away. And so if that flew two or three more yards, I would have had maybe a 25-footer where I was standing there directly up the, whole, the hill for birdie. And it, was a very, it would have been a very makeable putt. So I was very, I just was kind of frustrated because I would have really liked to keep pouring it on. And here just kind of caught it a little thick. Didn't quite catch it the way I wanted to out of the bunker. So I have a little bit more work left now for to save my par. Looks like I got about 12 feet here. But the, the good thing is I have, I remember these greens pretty well. So the green reading was definitely better than it normally is for me. And made another really fantastic stroke and canned it so kept the momentum going and i find that when you make those putts you know those 10 to 12 footers for par after a few birdies those are the putts that make or break an awesome round because when you make those putts man that does something to keep you going that really makes you feel good and you're just in attack mode and now on to probably the second hardest hole in the course hole 18 and again i notice i took a little bit off of this now this is a long hole but you just can't be left here. So I made sure to put it right because there's a ton of room right. There are some trees, but, you know, it, it, this is just a brutally hard hole. I really can't say anything else about this hole being a part four. And so you can see the green in the distance there. There's a ton of room right. So what I did, I slightly closed the face of my club and played a trap draw under that tree. But what I didn't want to do was give it the possibility of overdrawing into the water left. So... It started way right, and it's coming back just a bit. Now, I know this is going to stay right of the green, but and you can see where it ended up there. But look at all that room I have. You know, it, it's definitely not, and that's where I was from the trees there. And so, with all that room, I have a very legitimate chance to get up and down for a four. And especially knowing that I have basically a two-shot cushion to beat my previous score, I'm playing very, I don't want to say conservatively but I'm playing very I'm as smart as I can play because I don't want to make a double or a bogey and you know give back I mean a double bogey or a triple and give back all the work I worked hard for so now I have a seven or eight footer for par I think this would get me in at a 71 and unfortunately I pulled it so I'll knock that one in to shoot even par 72 so I hope you guys enjoyed the video please like comment and subscribe and I will see you guys with many more uploads in the future next time.